Turn your Windows laptop into a Steam Deck. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready, the channel all about the Steam Deck. This is my weekly news update and the first story we're jumping into now that October is over and I have to go back into sad mode for 364 more days is that we have the list of the top 10 most played Steam Deck games in October and it's actually shaken up for once because I feel like for the past few months it's been largely the same games with maybe like one or two new additions. This month we actually got a pretty cool list of games. Valve didn't share what order Order this list is in and I could see both the bottom game and the top game being the most played games in October on Steam so I'm just gonna go through the list and tell you what I think because you know they're all great games but I I'm thinking that it's like most played to least most played just based on the last game like when it came out so the first game is Vampire Survivors the game that will not leave this list but it makes sense because it just came out of early access and it's also a very cheap game I think full price for this game is like five dollars and if you've never played it it's one of the best games for the Steam Deck because it's got the perfect combination of being super addictive, a game that you can pick up and play whenever you want, wherever you are, and it won't drain your battery. Now there is a performance mode that I would suggest using just because once you get a lot of enemies on screen, it really tanks the performance of the Steam Deck. And I don't see a game that I've been playing that's very similar on here, so I'm just going to recommend it. It's called Dome Keeper. I heard about this from my friend Jake Baldino, and it's basically a game where you have a dome that has a weapon on it and like there's waves of monsters and you you have a little timer that tells you when they're coming and you dig down and find resources to upgrade your dome and your character. So you kind of got to like, you know, play the risk reward game of being down there longer to get more resources or losing your dome's health to monsters coming. It's a very good game, very reminiscent of Vampire Survivors. It's $17, but I think it's worth it. Second place is Persona 5 Royal. Obviously, this was going to be high on the list just because this is Persona 5 on PC. I've been waiting so long to play this game on a handheld just because JRPGs for me, I need to play them on a handheld. I can't sit in front of my TV for 100 hours playing turn-based combat and visual novel type stuff. I need to have something else on the TV that I can use as background noise. And you know, having Persona 5 Royal on a handheld is giving me those nostalgic vibes to when I was in college and I got to play so much Persona 4 Golden on my PlayStation Vita. Like those were really the days. There's that boss who looks like a giant brain and he was such a pain in the ass to fight. I hated it so much and I'm so excited to finally be playing Persona 5 Royal on the Steam Deck because it runs great. You can basically run it maxed out at 40 FPS and it's awesome. Third on the list is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection and man this game is another one that's bringing me back to the launch of the Vita because the first game I got was Uncharted Golden Abyss and there was just such a great Friday where I was sitting in the basement of my freshman dorm playing Uncharted charted Golden Abyss on my Vita watching AMC Fear Fest. It's like one of my best memories from the first year of college and this game runs really well on the Steam Deck. It runs well on every PC pretty much that you could throw at it and I think it's worth picking up for the price they're asking just because I want to keep encouraging these great PC ports from Sony. Gotham Knights is number four and that's kind of surprising just because this game does not have a great reception on Steam user reviews or critic reviews. I think the game's fine. I think I would enjoy it a lot more if they could figure out the frame rate issue and the CPU utilization that seems to be the biggest issue plaguing this game. Uh, it's kind of crazy to see it at the number four spot. I would assume Arkham Knight would be higher because playing Gotham Knights for a day made me just want to play Arkham Knight more. So that's what I dug into after I was super frustrated with the frame rate on PC. And I just can't imagine this runs all that well on the Steam Deck. Fifth and sixth place I've never played before or heard of. You're going to have to tell me how they are down in the comments. It's Potionomics and Coral Island. Then we've got Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, Victoria 3, Ninth place is Project Triangle Strategy. It looks awesome. I've got this on my wish list for the Christmas sale. And 10th place is a game that I have been enjoying the hell out of on Steam Deck, which is Signalis. This is a game that's made for people who really love the idea of old school survival horror, but need a little bit of modernization to really get into it. Like this is the perfect middle ground for me where everything makes sense on where to go and solving the puzzles is a lot of fun, but it's not esoteric and just so out there with its puzzle design that you can't figure out anything out without a guide. This is a really good game. It's $20. I cannot recommend it enough. I think Humble Games published it alongside Moonscars, which is another game that I really liked. It just kind of seemed to come and go on uh, Steam. And then they also shared a list of the top 10 games sorted by hours played on the Steam Deck. And I'm just going to run through this really quickly. You've got Vampire Survivors, Elden Ring, Cyberpunk 2077, Stardew Valley, No Man's Sky, Fallout 4, Hades, Persona 5 Royal, The Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim Special Edition, 
Edition and Grand Theft Auto 5. You know, if you put a gun to my head and said, Jimmy, you gotta list the top 10 most played games on the Steam Deck by hours, I probably would hit about eight of these 10 games. So everything's making sense, everything's cool. I'm glad all these games run as well as they do on the Steam Deck. The next story is an unfortunate one because it actually affects a lot of games that are being played on the Steam Deck regularly. So EA is switching over from Origin to their new EA Play app and they're going back in and making it so that that light version of EA Origin that you would use before on the Steam Deck where you would just log in in offline mode and then you could play games like Jedi Fallen Order just fine. That is being replaced by this new EA Play launcher and it's breaking a lot of games on the Steam Deck. So it actually broke a game for me, which was super frustrating. I wanted to play Dead Space 3. I just watched John Carpenter's The Thing and Dead Space 3 has always given me The Thing vibes and I really wanted to finish that game before the remake comes out. So I downloaded it on Steam and realized that it no longer works because of this new launcher. So it actually breaks quite a few other games though. Like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, The Sims 4, Need for Speed Heat, Titanfall 2, and the remake of Need for Speed Most Wanted. Now thankfully, even though Mass Effect Legendary Edition was on this list of games, EA is apparently going back in and fixing these individually on a case-by-case -case basis. Mass Effect Legendary Edition allegedly works now for a lot of people, so I'm hoping they make their way through the entire list of games because this is super frustrating and I don't really know who's to blame for it, right? Like the Steam Deck has sold a million units. They have a lot of users using Linux to play a lot of these games, but on EA's side of the fence, they've got so many other Windows PCs to support and PS5s and PS4s and Xbox Series Xs that that million Steam Decks out there versus how many people are actually probably playing an EA game at any given time on their Steam Deck, it's probably like a very small number. So as much as I hate a lot of the stuff EA does, I can kind of understand why they wouldn't immediately divert resources to make sure that this new EA Play app works specifically on the Steam Deck because it seems like they've got their hands full at least even getting it running on Windows. But it is nice to see that they are going back through and individually fixing all these games. I just hope it happens sooner rather than later because while it's great you have Mass Effect Legendary Edition and Titanfall 2 working on the device, I really want to play Dead Space 3 because that's an older game that I'm positive will run at 60 FPS and that feels like a perfect handheld game because it's like a little bit of a looter at its core. I know it messes up on the story and it's more action than even Dead Space 2 was, but it's still a game I would like to play on my Steam Deck. Honestly, that would be a pretty good candidate for a docked game. I feel like the Steam Deck could probably push at least 1080p on that game at medium or high settings because I don't know if you've ever tried the original Dead Space or Dead Space 2, but both run extremely well on the device. But hey, in the meantime, I've still got Signalis and when I finish that, I think I'm going to give John Carpenter's The Thing for PS2 another playthrough. If you've never played that game, it is awesome. It's got John Carpenter's endorsement on the story and it is a supremely underrated game. So yeah, if you have a lot of EA games on your Steam Deck and you haven't updated them in a while, I would stop those from updating until you're sure that the new EA Play software that's replacing Origin doesn't break that specific game on your deck because we don't know how long it's going to take for all of these games to be fixed. And the last news story I have for you guys today is that you can essentially turn any Windows device into a Steam Deck or if you're playing on Windows on your Steam Deck, you can also get that awesome Steam Deck UI because Valve has officially released the beta version of Steam that includes the new version of Big Picture, which is literally just the visual representation of the Steam Deck Steam OS. I just went and did this on the computer that's right in front of me while I'm filming this and it's actually an extremely easy process. All you've got to do is go to account in Steam and then opt into the beta of Steam's client, like the actual Steam client. And then once you do that, and then once you've updated your Steam client to the beta version of Steam, all you have to do is go to the shortcut on your Windows desktop and right click it, click properties, and then under target, you just add minus sign or like hyphen, I don't really know what to say, minus sign gamepad UI, save that and then restart Steam. And then when you restart Steam, it'll start into this new Steam OS style big picture UI. So at first I was kind of frustrated because it's a system where you're always in this UI or you're not in the only way to switch back and forth, it seemed was to take that gamepad UI launch command out of the shortcut. But I noticed by doing this that it didn't change the shortcut that I have pinned to my taskbar on Windows 11. So what you could do is just use these two different shortcuts to open Steam. You would use the desktop one when you want to use this new controller layout, or you could use the taskbar one if you just want to use Steam the normal way. Now, the kind of frustrating thing, which I'm sure will be fixed in the future, is that you don't get the great uh, FPS overlay, which I guess is Mango HUD on Linux. You don't get that on this new UI for Steam. You just get the frame rate counter that's been built into Steam forever. And it is a good frame rate counter. I used to use uh, 
NVIDIA GeForce experiences frame rate counter all the time. And that thing is super selective about what games it wants to work with and what games it doesn't want to. The Steam one, on the other hand, works 100% of the time and it works flawlessly. So it is nice to still be able to have a frame rate counter in the top left corner, but it would be awesome to have that nice readout that you get at the level two version of the Steam built-in frame rate counter because you also get stuff like frame time. You get that nice little graph that's showing you skip frames. You can see if a game is stuttering and you can kind of take advantage of making sure that the game is running as well as you want it to. And also it doesn't have any of that great stuff that you get like the built-in Steam uh, V-Sync, which works better than any in-game V-Sync I've ever used. I was struggling with that with Gotham Knights, where if you set the game to limit at 30 FPS and use their in-game V-Sync, you get stuttering when you're panning the camera, which I just literally can't deal with. But allegedly, if you just use the built-in Steam OS version of V-Sync and limit your screen to 30 FPS, that stuttering is sort of mitigated, which is great. But it also doesn't look like we're going to have to wait too long to be able to take advantage of Steam OS 3 on PCs because it looks like Valve is getting ready to release the image to restore your PC to have Steam OS. Because I know for a fact, when that drops, I am making a partition on my gaming laptop to have Steam OS for all of these games that have DirectX 12 or Unreal Engine 4 stuttering. Now, obviously it's not gonna fix all the stuttering on PC that comes along with DirectX 12 and Unreal Engine 4, but it's a good start because with games like Elden Ring, it totally does fix all of the stuttering that came along with that game on Windows. So I could totally see myself just having a 500 gigabyte or even 750 gigabyte partition on my SSD for games that have stuttering and games that just run better on SteamOS. I personally love the Linux desktop. I love SteamOS. I love the UI that comes along with this new version of big picture mode. So I could definitely see myself even maybe making Windows my second option on my gaming PC. So hopefully the fact we're able to see the website and the restore image creator that Valve has been working on is a good sign that we're not going to have to wait too much longer to be able to update our own PCs to SteamOS 3.0. What I would obviously really like to see after that is the dual boot support for SteamOS and Windows 11 on the Steam Deck. I have the SD card set up. I understand that that works. It's just not a great experience right now. And knowing that that's the only way to play Game Pass games and online games like Destiny 2 and Dead by Daylight, I really want Valve to at least support being able to dual boot until they can figure out how to get Bungie and uh, Behavior Interactive to update their games to use the right anti-cheat on Linux.